Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match, which will not contain as much shiny as the last match. I apologize. Randy versus Fail Dots on Wanderlust, which is not a map that lends itself to nuclear silos. This last game we had a nuclear silo, and there was shiny. I had to make it happen, but there was still shiny. It was going to happen, and it happened. By my hand! But this game is not going to be no shiny. So, yeah. There's going to be, however, Fail Toss and Randy on Wanderlust, which is still going to be pretty interesting. So, we'll get started. So, I should probably actually point out, if you aren't familiar, Randy is pretty much the best, if one of the best players. Him and Golda are the best players of 0k. Fail Toss is actually a fairly new player. We have seen him a few times play. He is... I'm not sure how new he is, but he is... Still fairly good. I don't think he's that new, but I only started recently casting games of his, so I, he might have been out for a while. Came back in. Anyway, he is going to be up against Randy. So, good luck, failed us. Randy going for jump bots, getting very quick freaker, and then into into puppies, in fact. Which is a bit of an odd choice in Wanderlust, given that there's no wreckage on the map. That's, actually, puppies don't go off of wreckage that is not on the map to be... Yeah, Rex is on the map to begin with, doesn't really count. Puppies can't build off that. But the Freakers will be able to deal some damage to the Fleas. Not going to give Puppies anything to work with. Actually, it's going to distract the Puppies more than anything. The Fleas are able, however, to push in. Randy does manage to get rid of one of them, but Fail Thoughts just using them for scouting purposes, just to know where Randy has located himself. And on the other hand, he does some Venoms in the main base. Those are more of his direct attack. But yeah, Randy is going for... This is kind of unusual for Randy. He's normally a bit more of a conservative player, but this is more of a Golda thing to do. I think Golda is... I think he kind of does this as a bit of a handicap. I think Randy is as well. Just, although, admittedly, jumpers aren't... Part of... I guess kind of says a handicap is unusual, but at the same time, it's unusual, so your opponent doesn't know how to deal with it, necessarily. I think Fail Thoughts might, but... It can be tricky to deal with jumpies... The Fail Thoughts is going for Spiders, which already complicates things. He's spiders against Jumpies. This is... Again, not the, like, spider, I'm glad to see Spiders are being used more often. That is true. It's just... This is unusual. Anyway... Flea does spot out that Randy's expanded to the Southwest, so Fail Thoughts well aware of what's going on there. At the same time... A puppy just gets rid of a Metal Extractor, because that's what puppies do. Not super cost effective at the start of the game. Like I said, I am surprised he's going for puppies at the start of the game. This is... Like I said, it's not the most cost effective thing to do. Admittedly, against a metal extractor, it's not a bad idea, but... Yeah, puppies are 50 metal each. Their main cost effectiveness comes from Rex. Find Rex, they feed off Rex. And this puppy is actually going to be... Well, it's going to be going in a pretty good direction. It looks like Thoughts is going to intercept. He does have Raider, he does see the puppy coming in. These Venoms should be able to intercept in time, though I'm not entirely sure. I think Puppies may actually have... Let's see, 170 range versus 240. Nope, the Venoms are going to win this out. And stun goes the Puppy. That Puppy is dead. There's not much more to say about that. That Puppy really didn't do much. And Failthos, still aware of what's going on. He does actually see that there's expansion going on here with no... Well, nothing really going on, but... Freaker does slow down the Flea. Not really going to help too much. I mean, honestly, it's just leaving the free up to be attacked. The pyro is coming up to help defend from Randy, but it looks like these fleas have better things to worry about. Getting rid of the wind generators. They have to be careful about this, though. They don't want to get themselves killed in the process. As you can see, Failthos is moving them just to the edge of their range, just to make sure that they don't die as a result. And still taking some damage, but pyro is coming down to deal with them, and away they go to get rid of that metal extractor again. And they should be able to do so. That pyro is coming after them, but it's not going to work out. That Metal Extractor is going to go down first, and the Fleas die to the Metal Extractor! I... well, I guess this sort of denies Randy the kill, but frankly, you don't want your Fleas to die periods. I think Felthos just missed that, failed to pay attention to the last second. Admittedly, those Fleas were kind of doomed, but they didn't quite have to die there. There was a way out of that. However, still got rid of Metal Extractor, got rid of a few Wind Generators, so keeping Felthos on a, sorry, keeping Randy on his toes a little bit. And in come Venoms for stunning purposes, but this Venom is not going to do much. The Pyro is going to get rid of it. Venoms actually do counter Pyros, by the way. Venom Redback combo does wonders against Pyros. Moderators will deal with it fairly effectively, but... Just Pyros? Yeah, Venom Redback does a great job. Moderator just has the range to deal with it. Freakers as support as well helps out. 
So it's a little bit hard for the Venoms to actually deal with the Pyro when they're slowed. Because just when you have a couple Pyros, or a couple Venoms, they stun lock a Pyro. And then the Redback just deal all the damage. Or the Venoms deal the damage to you, but the Redback deals it faster. However, Felthos going for Hermits, which is not a bad idea, assuming that Randy does switch over to Moderators. And even just in general, not a terrible idea, because the Venoms, they deal the main stun. But I mean, you need a few of them. And the Hermits just deal with anything heavy that comes out. Now, Felthos is going to be building up... Well, let's see, he's actually going for Recluse Hermit. Yeah, Recluse Hermit primarily, with some Redbacks and Venoms on top of that. He's... Well, in an interesting position. I don't... He needs four, He needs more venom, Venoms. I think one or two more Venoms would do the trick, especially with that Pyro. But he needs more. Actually, I'd say three or four, given the fact that the Freakers are there, are going to slow down the existing Venoms. And that Recluse is starting to deal with the Freakers a little bit. It's a, going to be tricky. The Recluses don't have the best accuracy. It's the one thing. Recluses are really bad shots. And the Pyro coming in to deal with this, it is going to go down, but it... Gets rid of that Venom in the process. That Venom does not have the chance to get out of there. It's going to burn to death before it... Man, yeah, there it goes. It burns. It dies. The Redback as well is not going to die, but it's going to take a lot of damage. Failed Thoughts, Morphix Commander up to level 1. Well, Randy... Still at level 0. This is on 1, 2, 4, 9. So they're actually having Commander nerfs at this point. Commanders are f plus 4, plus 6 by default, not plus, plus 4, plus 8. And Energy Cell has been removed as an upgrade option. So Felthos going for Particle Beam and Nano Lathe, which is not a bad choice given his economic advantage. He's not floating yet. Randy is floating. Randy does not have any caretakers at the factory. He doesn't have any additional factories. His his commander is building up more in the center of the map, but he's not going to be able to get rid of the metal that quickly, that easily. And Felthos continuing to build up. Actually, not building up his army. What the heck? He's not building more army at the moment. He is... He is positioning what army he has, a ragtag force of actually quite a lot. Hermits, or Hermits, Redbacks, and Recluses primarily, with one Venom. Against the Freakers, not a terrible idea, though admittedly the Hermits need to be up front to tank the damage from the defenders. And Failthos, if he's aware of that, he is aware of the location of the defenders. He needs to flank that, and he sort of is. He is kind of flanking the defenders, so that's not bad. He is actually managing to get rid of the defenders without too much issue. Did lose a Recluse, though. Not the best thing to do, and Redbacks... Coming in and getting rid of the defenders, no problem, actually. Tanking the defenders without too much issue. The Freakers are being a bit of a pain, but they are going to go down without any problem. And Pyro's coming on top of that. Randy, like I said, building only 10 metal per second worth of build power. No caretakers, no additional factories, nothing to really support this. He's, he is now dropping on metal, but I think that's just because of this stuff being built in the Northeast. Like all these... That's 20 build power being pushed in defensive structures to the northeast, but that's about it. Well, Felthos, on the other hand, has two caretakers pushing his factory, and now has... Nice cube. I'm, I'm surprised he's not going for repeat build, though. Notice he does not have repeat on. I don't know why that is. I think he might be... I'd be curious if Felthos was a StarCraft player beforehand. I mean, it can be hard to get in the habit of switching to repeat build rather than just go back to your factory and build more units when coming from StarCraft. Speaking from personal experience. Although, admittedly, I got used to repeat build pretty quickly. But still... It's it's not a habit you get into. Actually, the reverse is also a difficult habit when if you go back to play StarCraft at all and you think, oh yeah, I've got repeat build. Oh wait, no, I don't. Right, I could go back to the factories and you have to get used to that again. Anyway, Feldos, Bostring, Feldos and Randy posturing. Randy in a great position though. Six pyros, two venoms. That's not going to work out. Feldos really does not have much of a chance here. I think he might... If there weren't for defenses, he might have a chance if he had enough Venoms, but at this point, the Venoms are not going to last long enough. They're going to just stun out what they can, and they do have Splash on their stun, so that does help. But even with that, not enough, no stun locking going on, not enough stunning going on. The Recklesses are pretty much the only chance that exists, and given their accuracy, I don't know how much I'd count on that. So these Pyros, regrouping, pushing back, possibly repairing, definitely regrouping. Randy actually does have Beam Laser. Might not have switched the commander build up. He does have beam laser. You would expect E cell on top of that, but my guess is it might have just been that he didn't rebuild his commander list. Feldos does have the south, by the way. Randy is in the north. I mean, players have actually been pretty good about map control. Randy's just been really keen on taking that center, and it's tough to hold ground with a spider factory. It just it just is. With enough venoms, like I said, you can get rid of the pyros effectively, but 
against Jumpies, is, it's difficult. In general, it's difficult. Against Cloaks, it's especially hard, actually, because the Rockos, but... Yeah, Spiders just have a hard time holding territory. Until they get enough Venoms, they can stunlock everything. Or get Crabs. The Crabs are just territory-breaking than anything else. However, Feltos is pushing forward. He does have a Stinger to worry about. Trying to, it's actually had enough recluses, I think, to be able to start dealing enough damage despite the inaccuracies. When he's got, he's only got three. Not bad though. Given how clumped up Randy's forces are, that's not surprising. Randy, however, has gotten caretakers. He does have 30 build power being pushed into his factory. He has a 56 metal as well, and using a lot of that build power to build up more and more defenses. The crab is going to come in. It's going to do its best to break it, but I don't know how much of a chance there is there. And the pyro is coming to the south. Half a dozen pyros to the south. Another half dozen in the center. Just ready to deal with everything that Feldas has. I think Randy might be afraid of Venoms, but he doesn't know that there are no Venoms in play. He knows that now, though, and he's pushing in. Or, no, Randy's still keeping back. He's still holding back. He doesn't want to lose too many Pyros yet. And a couple more Venoms come in, but I think like half a dozen Venoms, easily. Minimum. Feldas has come in with his Crab and is now going to start pushing forward. Stinger, unlike the Penetrator, does not have anywhere near the, <laughs> anywhere near the amount of damage. You don't need the amount of range either. It's actually equivalent to the crab. But Venom's now actually managing to push forward. Everything managing to push forward. Randy doing a Randy doing a full-on retreat here. Although at the same time he is attacking in the northeast, and that attack is probably going to win him the game. Felthos breaks to the center, but loses all of his defenses in his main base, and these pyros are going to tear it apart. This this is it. This is game. Nice attempt by Felthos broke the center, but. Just a distraction, ultimately. Randy able to use that to tear apart everything inside Feldos' base. Feldos just push forward, do as much damage as he can, and you might be able to rebuild in time. You might be able to get something up. Admittedly, Randy has a massive economic advantage, but pushing forward, no. Feldos throws in the towel, and that is game. Figures there's no way out of it, and I'm not sure if I agreed with him at that point. But yeah, more Venoms probably would have been good. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. And that is going to be it for me tonight. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the Shinies in Game 2. And have a good night, everyone.